Welcome to another CEO Wisdom Pod with Barish Kara Dogen with us today. He is CEO at Jingle. Jingle is a really cool app. Uh, basically, I had a ice cream um, acquirer the other day on the pod, and we were talking about ice cream truck innovation, uh, which includes a bunch of things, right? Like ordering uh, the ice cream truck on the app, seeing the truck come on and serve ice cream to kids. And apparently, Barris is exactly doing that or version of that. So I thought that was really cool. Uh, this podcast is brought to you by podpire.com. If you want to start scale, be invited to a podcast like this one. Get more sponsors. Get people uh, to talk to you that would normally not accept, right? Podcasts are really win-win. And I can even help you have a back end to that. So mastermind, remarketing, newsletters, and the yada, the yada podfire.com for that, my podcasting agency. Barish, welcome to the pod. Can you tell us a bit more about Jingle? Sure. Yes, uh, Jingle is uh, my third startup. And um, my co-founder and I, we, we, we started Jingle because we noticed that uh, last mile delivery had some issues. People were complaining that last mile delivery takes, you know, 45 minutes to an hour. You know, magically a $20 burrito becomes a $40 burrito. And, uh, you know, something was wrong. Nobody was really making money off of it. People, companies were struggling. And, um, you know, we were thinking of what could be a good way to solve this. And then we thought a very old business model. I grew up in uh, Istanbul, Turkey. And when I was growing up, uh, you know, there would be these street sellers. There still are that they drive around the streets with loudspeakers going tomatoes, peppers, onions. And when I was 10 years old, my mom would hear it. I'd go to the window and say, hey, two kilos of tomatoes, five onions, apartment 10, and they'd bring it. And that was a business model, you know. And I said, hey, that's last mile delivery. It somehow works. I told my friend, that's a 40-year-old business model. That's as long as I remembered. And that's when my friend said, no, no it's not a 40-year-old business model. It's a 400-year-old business model. That's how deliveries used to be done. And then we looked into it. We said, hey, what if there was a push model? What if when you order on Uber Eats or DoorDash, you pull the food from the place, you order it, somebody goes there, brings it to you. What if there was a push model that foods came floated around and they let you know when they're nearby saying, hey, I'm your favorite ice cream store. I'm around the corner. If you order from me now, it will come in 10 minutes, maybe less, and it'll cost you far less because I'm right here. You can only order me when I'm near. And that's how Jingle was born. It's, it's the jingle of an ice cream truck but it's now digital. So the loudspeaker of the jingle of the ice cream truck you hear is now a notification, a text, or hey, we're even we're even dreaming of one day having an audible jingle where you actually hear the truck even. But that's, that's how the concept came. It turns out vendors are looking for better alternatives. Consumers are always looking for better alternatives and jingle was born. Tell us about your obscure past as a VC. Oh yes, sure. So well, let's see. I've been in America 30 years. Uh, my first 10 years, I was an engineer. And then, um, you know, I was an engineer with some social skills. So I applied to business school. And at that time, I said, hey, um, you know, I'm a kid from Turkey. I don't know anybody in the U.S. What's a good way to build a network? You know, you need a good network for anything you do. I had never heard about this thing, venture capital before, you know, before, you know, I was an engineer, like I said, I was in so when I came to business school, I said, I, you know, did a summer internship and I realized that you walk around with somebody else's billion dollars and people come to you and tell you their hopes and dreams for the future. And that's a really good way to build a network. So um, I tried venture capital for 10 years. I was at the USVP, most of it, invested in some telecom companies, some chip companies, then went to another firm. So, um, you know, that was my uh, first attempt after business school. I tried venture capital. Why Why jump straight in? Last time you told me that you probably did that to get an idea of a bunch of business models, get an idea of what it means to be a good founder, probably try to get ideas for possible product market fits. What yeah, was your that, that That comes with it. That came after, you know, after being an engineer, I was a VPC, but I, I did it for 10 years. And that's when I realized, you know, I identified more and more with the CEOs. I felt like, uh, I wanted to be the person closing the sales or beating, building the business. You know, it's a different kind of leadership. Obviously, being a VC has its own entrepreneurial uh, angle, but the CEO thing is fun. You build a team, and that's when I switch from one to the other. It's pretty cool. Your yeah. current business model, you're focused in the SF Bay area and probably a bit larger, but you seem to 
be doing a lot of things. Are you in testing mode, like dog grooming, then you have pedicure, or then you have yeah. an haircut? Are, are you in A-B testing mode? And when will that A-B testing end sort of, well, or do you think it will ever end? Let's say that sure. you find out that pedicure is your app, you know, and yeah, you launch a pedicure uh, only app. Charles, that's a very, very good question. Uh, we're 10 months into the app being generally available. Uh, we're still exploring. Uh, we have some crazy vendors coming on board. I mean, believe it or not, in a few weeks, we're going to have a vendor that does, uh, you know, hangover relief by an IV. You know, you have a party. I believe it. That's amazing. And then all of a sudden you put something in and it's, uh, you know, maybe that's a killer app. You know, I have some friends who keep telling me that mobile Botox is going to be killer. Uh, we don't know. We're still exploring. Obviously, things like, uh, you know, quick purchase stuff like pastries, donuts, ice cream, they do sell well. Ice cream is a gigantic market. You know, ice cream trucks have been around for a while. So that's that looks like it's one of the areas. But yeah, we don't know exactly what the killer app is yet. We're uh, still exploring. What niches are you seeing explode more than others? Sure. So, uh, def <laughs> you know, surprise, uh, we have knife sharpening on board. It turns out nobody in America has sharp knives. I mean, funny. That's something that could scale if we did it because, you know, they see the knife sharpening truck, they press the button, it comes, they, we sharpen their knives. I mean, that's, it's a little thing. I mean, I don't know how big it can explode, but it's definitely going to, you know, if it explodes to uh, sustain itself, we're happy. You know, we, we don't want each one of our vendors to, uh, you know, make a huge killing. But if they get profitable on their vents, then that's what we've done our job. We've discovered a new channel for retail. Uh, but I think uh, pastries, snacks, the quick uh, happiness kind of stuff is always going to be big. Right. The quick serotonin. Are you raising some money um, is my first question. Yeah, we raised uh, we raised a good amount of angel money, uh, but we are out looking. We're looking, for, we're, we're looking to close out our round. So we've been doing safe so far. And we're looking for a million, million and a half to close out and uh, gives us enough money to hopefully second part of next year in which case we can raise more but that that money will hopefully improve the concept and uh, we'll have lots of vendors lots of users and off we go so okay let's say that you're raising like a million uh would that be accurate or less uh maybe more yeah we won't say no to money you know okay one million how far will that bring you in terms of gtm strategy because you're probably advertising on facebook ads uh insta tiktok right very rarely very rarely we're not at a scale to do facebook ads. they haven't really worked for us to be perfectly honest with you i think you you need a bigger user base or you need to have a really big budget to make that work uh what works best for us is friends telling friends events word of mouth so that's where our marketing dollars go and one of the things we decided to do from day one is um, if this is more pronounced in Europe, but these delivery companies are killing each other in art advertising and marketing. You can't walk around London without seeing Deliveroo, Get Here, you know, all those guys all over the place. They're kind of playing the last man standing who can raise more money and do most advertising. Well, you know, in the heydays, we've heard customer acquisition costs for companies like Gorillas as high as $1,000. I and mean, no one's going to survive playing that game. But what we do is, because we present ourselves as a new channel for our vendors, our vendors help us acquire users. In their ice cream stores, they mention Jingle. They they let people they ask people to download Jingle. So there's you know we are uh, like our ice cream stores open a new store when they're on Jingle. So they help us a lot, and that lowers customer acquisition costs a lot. Otherwise, it's very tough for a startup to come in and take on head on the gigantic marketing budgets of those guys. We have to do it in a more creative way. So why wouldn't like uh, Rappi or Uber Eats or DoorDash get into that category? Sure. I mean, they uh, in the past, Uber Eats actually tried it once. They tried it with hot foods early on. It didn't work. Well, they would have to change their model. They'd have to say, hey, you know, this, this uh, the gig economy angle we're changing. Um, and there's a different kind of, I mean, they have to restart, get different users, educate their users. And it's a different business model. They'd have to try it. But they also have, we're also learning different things. Uh, you know, we're collecting data on uh, user behavior, especially uh, knowledge on putting supply and demand together when supply is on wheels. It's something that uh, other companies haven't seen yet. 
what does it mean to be a store? You know, when you're ordering from a brick and mortar store, that brick and mortar store sees a fixed demand. They know Fridays are good. They know Mondays are bad. But when you're an ice cream truck, all of a sudden, where you go, when you go, can change your demand profile dramatically. That's a whole different way of uh, training your systems, different way of optimizing. They'd have to go through all those paths we went through. So that uh, particular business, you know, I've seen a startup in San Francisco that was doing that, but like via a robot. Was it Robomart? I forgot like how it was called, but it was there this a uh, store on wheels. Robomart. Yeah. Yep. There was a store. It's like a vending machine on wheels. Yeah. Uh, um, I think they were more active in uh, Southern California. Sure. Uh, I don't know how, how they're doing, to be perfectly honest with you. I think they closed down. And I oh. think that that's my point. Uh, I'll just Google them. But what are your thoughts on that? Having like a sure. an automatic driving vehicle, getting there without a human in it and opening the little store. And there's everything. I mean, they're hitting the yeah. convenience niche, right? So sure. uh, paper towels and uh, sure. chewing gum. Have... Yep. So that's that's the answer is in your question right there because they were still selling generic stuff. And whenever these delivery companies in their heyday, I used to test them. I, they used to say retail prices, no service fees. So I would order a single can of Diet Coke at two in the morning and get voila. You know, somebody would come in with a bag and drop a 99 and charge my credit card 99 cents. Very tough business. We went out with artisanal stuff, stuff that has high margins. Like we're talking about your corner bakery store that there's a long line in front of, your, your artisanal ice cream store. Now, why is that? Because there's little margin for the retailer for M&Ms and Diet Coke, or like you said, paper towels. That stuff has such low margins, you need to sell a lot every day to cover for the cost of the truck. And even though they're autonomous, they're not exactly, most of them have somebody in them. I mean, there's costs for that. So if they focused on artisanal stuff and they had more margin, maybe it's a better chance. But if you do generic stuff, I don't think we can make money with that. And also, then you're competing with Safeway. How on earth is a startup going to carry 200,000 SKUs like Safeway or you're taking on Amazon in some way? So we don't want to go there. We want to start with stuff that you can't really get on Safeway or even DoorDash. Hmm. So RoboMart wasn't the one that closed down. I think it was another. Now, picking and choosing these specific retailers it's like etsy sort of but like probably a bit more niche how complicated is that for you to do so, and do you refuse uh sellers that don't have any specific or niche product well since we're a platform think of us as airbnb for mobile stores if somebody wants to host their room airbnb is not going to say no they can throw up their store and see what they do in the future that's how jingle will be hey Maybe somebody's cracked the nut on selling M&Ms and Diet Coke. We don't want to care. We're a marketplace. Anybody can come in and set up a shop on Jingle. Say, hey, I'm selling this. You turn on your store and we'll let our users know when you're around. So ultimately, uh, we're going to be okay with that. Um, but uh, we haven't re really refused anybody because you know, we're, we're not that known that they get so much traffic yet, to be honest. With you. But we find people. We find the artisanal ones. And we look at people, vendors who can help us market, like I told you, the being able to uh, market for us is important. So some are too big because they don't care to market for you. Some are too small, but we find the, it's easy to find and they, they all want to grow. That's the best part. You always get a good audience with a vendor because we come in and say, hey, we love your store. How would you like to open another one? Of course we would like to, but this one happens to be on wheels. It makes a great conversation starting. So from the consumer perspective, I'm chilling here. I open the app and then I see some trucks near me and then I click on them or I touch them and then I get more information about what they're about. And if they're interesting, whether uh, it's a product they can consume, whether it's someone for my service, I walk up to them. Uh, no, is no. that The or... minute you order, it becomes the same as Uber Eats and DoorDash. They bring it to you. You tell them how you want. You say, leave it with my doorman, leave it at my porch. But the only difference is in the other vendors, you can order anything you want at any time. For us, you can only order when that van is in a certain radius from your home. And that's how we make it quicker and more efficient. In a way, in a way, the vendor says, I'll do deliveries that are profitable for me or make sense for me. Don't pull me away half an hour each time. I want to be in a certain area. And that makes the whole difference, actually. In some ways, we prevent unprofitable orders from coming in from the vendor's point of view. 
But by what about the consumer? The you know, like, couldn't I just like put on my agenda for the guy to come sharpen my blades? Uh, wow. Wouldn't that be better for me as a consumer than wait until he's there? Sure. So we 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 think about that. You know, you're asking about scheduling. Can I just order something scheduling? It is possible. Uh, but our premise coming out was that the young generation wants to press a button and want the thing to come. So hopefully, so that's our main focus. But it doesn't mean you can't schedule. And we have somewhere in between. So we think of ourselves as a dim sum restaurant. You know, those restaurants when carts of food come and you pick it up. We're like that. That's actually the push model. If a restaurant where you order and the chef makes it is the pull model, you pull the food from the kitchen. The dim sum restaurant is the push model. Food comes and you take. But what if a cart comes and they don't have what you like? Well, you tell the person, hey, I'd like to have, you know, the walnut shrimp. And they say something in the radio and the walnut ship truck knows you're there and they come to your table. We have the same feature. You can say, hey, I'm interested in this kind of wine. I'm interested in this ice cream. Let me know when the van is nearby. And that's what we do. When the van is nearby, we either notify, we text. We even have a call feature where somebody can call and say, hey, we, I, we heard you want this badly. We're in your neighborhood. If you order us now, you'll get it in 10 minutes. So we do have, it's a quasi scheduling. Now in the future, we may go to scheduling, but then again, that changes the premise. You know, you can order things the day in, in one day from all Whole Foods, you know? So, so there's can, a little, so we are trying to do the on-demand instant uh, delivery concept. I can see two potentials, uh, two potential advantage from the consumer level one there's this serendipity that's like more serotonin you know like hey Absolutely. he's around let's let's order that and that makes my saturday quite exciting all of a sudden the second one would be freshness of the product so let's say that it's a bakery right i don't want a hard right. and cold bread i want one that has just been made and they're right. they're there you know they're 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 there to, to my door and that brings yep. kind of more humanity yeah. more experience more presence and in, in the experience yeah absolutely you you're doing my sales better than i could yeah but yeah. that's one of our taglines what's on jingle you know like before you wait 45 minutes to order a pint of ice cream let's see what's around the corner and now you open the jingle app you see all the vans in your neighborhood you can sort you know you know you can figure out who's the ones you love and boom, voila they're there yeah, and it's always exciting when you order, you know, for example, a Uber and you see it make a pivot to go get you and <laughs> yeah. it, they're like three or four minutes away. The spontaneity is, is quite important. I want yeah. to ask on the business front for them, though, what is required? So let's say that I am a baker and I want to use your app. I need a truck. Last time you told me that you would be willing to yeah. uh, help with that. So what do I need to get going there? So the model uh, the model trifurcates when you get asked that question. There's three different ways it could happen. The ideal is if somebody has their own van. I mean, we just added a dog groomer. Obviously, no jingle employee knows how to wash a dog or cat. You know, it's their van. They're on the platform. They do the customers. You know, we help them find people. That's model number one. Uh, not all bakeries have a van immediately. And we're still trying to prove the concept. So we have we have one and a half van. Uh, you know, so we have one van saying, hey, look, we can take some of your product. Let's try to see if we can sell it for you. And if it starts selling, you know, maybe you should consider renting a van and doing it yourself. But we'll proof the concept for you. And that's our us. But there's a third version, Charles, which is actually quite interesting. It's what we call micro micro franchising. Let's say you're an ice cream shop. You're closing down at 10 p.m., but you know the night, night you know, night clubbing crowd. I mean, best time to sell ice cream from our past experiences we know is from 10 p.m. to 2 a.m. And that, like this weekend, is Stanford Freshman Weekend. All the freshmen are coming. All the family. There's tons of people in Palo Alto. So that ice cream store says, "Hey, this weekend is a real active weekend. I want three different franchisees to come to my store at 10 p.m. I'm going to give them each a cooler full of, you know, 40 pints of ice cream. Each one of you." Go crazy, sell it in Palo Alto between 10 p.m. and midnight. And when you're done, bring it back. All of a sudden, for that three hours, that driver is not a dumb driver that goes from A to B. That driver is an entrepreneur. He gets the ice cream wholesale, sells at retail. That For that three hours, you open that ice cream store. And we help you. We, we You turn the Jingle app on. We say, hey, there are these people who requested it. Remember the request feature that you, you, know, you clicked on if something's not there? We tell them that where people where the requests are. We tell them where the events are. Imagine AI helps them figure out where the demands. And all of a sudden, 
while the ice cream store owner is asleep, he had three little franchisees sell. And those guys, because they're now entrepreneurs, they think for themselves. They're not, you know, A to B, take this package, drop it here. They think for themselves. They try to figure out where to go. And all of a sudden, they made three times per hour than they would on a delivery service because in that three hours, they were entrepreneurs. So that's a third model. It could be their van, our van, or we can bring in third party van. Right. Yesterday was like the Grito in Mexico, which I think is their independence there or something. And there in this go. in Perfect the center way. of um, Oaxaca, there was so many people, you know, and the interesting thing is that the municipality paid to give out food for free, you know, and wow. then we, we got out of uh, this mayhem because there was so many people per square meter. And then there were all the guys usually selling uh, elotes or like, you know, with their bicycle and their their tacos and, and all of that. They were wow. all staying at one place because they couldn't enter the site. Wow. And I just wish they would have an app to tell them like, hey, here's the demand. People are getting out and that's what they need. You know, these yep. folks do not have a clue. They don't yep. think much. Most of the guys um, running that are actually folks that are paid per shift. I think they're not like owners of the bike or the elote and all that. But yeah, yep. it, it would just help them quite a lot to yep. have an app to tell them like where to go and what to sell. They shouldn't sell only yep. one thing. They should offer a variety of thing and really maximize yep. the profits there. And imagine, you know, I mean, this is a very extreme example, but uh, you make me think, imagine in an area, 100,000 people started requesting things. And we tell the drivers, hey, you got 20 people over here. You drive south. There's unmet demand there. I mean, all this could happen real time. So they don't have to crowd one area. I can There's imagine that, people. you know, yeah. um, it, it's not far fetched. Like the scenario you just described, the uh, freshman gathering, you know, there's there's a lot of these gatherings and sometimes we don't even know about them. Or let's say that there's a wedding at this spot and everyone gets out yeah. of the wedding at 11. No one knows yeah. that. It's like obscure. Yeah. It's an obscure fact yeah. and people are missing out on that. Provide. This is what we will provide our drivers. They'll open their app and we'll say, hey, here are where our active users are. You may want to go there. Here are where actually requests are. Here are where events that if you go there, you're going to trigger a lot of notifications, you know? And they can always have their own secrets and where to go. You know, if you're if you're Turkish and you know where the Turkish people play soccer all the time, you, you go there. You know, you can sort this stuff out. Yeah. Right. And last but not least, how do you make money of that? And what's sure. your plan? Where do you want to scale that? Sure. So, again, we always model ourselves from Airbnb because we're so fascinated on what a great company that is. Just like Airbnb charges the host and guests, we charge you know a percentage to the vendor. It's around ten percent. We may go up, we may go down, you know. And then we charge a flat fee for the consumer, and that's how that's how we make money. So our consumer fee is two ninety nine flat fee, which is one third or one fourth of what the other guys charge. Um, and of course, in our case, because the vendor drives, they get the tips too. There's no third party, and the vendors like that. Um, and then the, what we charge vendors, you know, could change. If, if when you do a IV, that's a, you know eight hundred dollar IV, would we, we, we'll be perfectly fine oh, if you charge less than ten percent, you know. But so we'll figure eight hundred dollar IV. I didn't I did know it was that it. expensive. I saw it. I mean, somebody could use it. It could. Uh, I mean, it's uh, I, I, those are amazing things. Yeah, but there are they exist. I think people would uh, would rather suffer at this price point. <laughs> <laughs> unless you're a lawyer that makes two thousand dollars an hour and you have a big meeting the next day there you, know? you go yeah that's a <laughs> that's a great use case uh, yeah. i mean if you're in uh palo alto and you're this um this rich vc as well um that would be a good scenario uh i just i was just reminded of a question though like the non-app uh side of things let's say that i'm i sell ice cream you know and people see my truck and and they stop me in the street so if I have an order, I cannot stop and serve them, right? Uh, how ah, do you well, handle that? Yes. In our case, uh, our drivers almost exclusively have to be... Okay, it's actually... The right answer to your question is up to the vendor. We assume the vendor delivers the orders. Now, is there a scenario where the vendor delivers and also sells from their truck? Well, the vendor's got to think that through. You know, if uh, maybe some orders will be delayed, you know, they have to, they have to optimize themselves. But... But I must say that's a very different business because to be a seller, 
you need all sorts of different regulations from the government than you are a delivery guy. A pizza delivery guy doesn't need to have a seller's permit. But if you're actually scooping ice cream from a truck and giving, you have to think that through. You have to say, okay, here's my seller's license. Here's where I can sell. I have to be careful not to sell outside the areas where I'm allowed to sell or in the manner in which I'm permitted to sell. But it's a vendor's choice. Again, this is a, you know, an Airbnb. You can rent your room. You can rent your whole house. It's up to the, up to the host. So similar, that problem is the vendor's uh, decision. Roger that. And in terms of where you want to bring your company, like what do you have in mind? Are you oh, going to yeah. be, are you going to have yeah, a so billion dollar valuation in seven years from now? I hope it's much faster than seven years, but yes, that's definitely our dream. Uh, we'd like to, once, once our vendors start hitting profitability, I think that that's our turning point for the business. And hopefully that hits next year, but we do want to open other areas. We're looking at we're looking at LA, we're looking at a few East Coast locations. Miami is wonderful. Uh, you know, there's many towns. And the beautiful thing is, all we need is a cult following of a brand, you know, a, an ice cream store with lots of users who really want their stuff badly, that they can start getting users from themselves and they start their business. So with little investment, we can turn on new regions. But yeah, we definitely want to be in more areas than just the Bay Area. Any plans to partner with uh, truck companies? Oh, that would be something, you know, uh, and I can imagine one of the big car companies who sells EV fleets to say, hey, we have a stake in this company called Jingle. If you lease a van from us, look, we can help you get on board Jingle or here's some incentives. Yeah, it would be grateful to partner with the EV fleet companies. What about sure. partnering with some municipalities, telling them, let me in and I give you 10% or you just prefer standing on the outskirts without dealing with that bureaucracy? It's um, It depends. We'll, we'll have to cross that bridge when we get there. I mean, there's plenty of desire to just do the delivery so far, but yeah. I mean, currently as it stands, we can stand right in front of a concert and meet people when they exit versus being in the fold. We'll see. So far, we're okay with uh, keeping it strictly delivery, strictly without a lot of uh, permits necessary. Any AI use case? How do you integrate uh, AI right now? Yeah, that's the most exciting part. It's for the first time, supply is on wheels. It's like a, you know, a sea anemone versus a starfish. One of them sits there and filters foods that it comes. The other one goes and hunts. So all of a sudden, supply can hunt down demand. When, can, when have we had a store say, hmm, where are my customers? Let me open, you know, move my store there. No, it doesn't happen. Usually stores wait, customers come. That paradigm is broken on Jingle. Now the stores wake up and say, where should I go? And that could use a lot of AI. Imagine all the event data. Imagine all the user behavior data. Imagine all the requests coming in. You know, uh, imagine AI starts saying, hey, something is going on here because a lot of requests are coming. Go there. Send all the ice cream trucks to this area. All that AI could actually uh, see. And it's it's a new way of matching supply and demand. And then drones. So you'd have like drone on top of your, your ice cream fantastic. truck and you yeah. would you would drop popsicles on yep. people. That would be nice. Yep. <laughs> all right. Well, Badish, thank you for coming on today. Where can people find out more about you? Uh, definitely download our app. Uh, you know, search Jingle Quick Services on the App Store. Try it out. Give us feedback. We're still learning. We want to invent a cheaper, more efficient way for everybody to get foods and services. Um, if And if it works, everybody benefits. There you go. And I am Charles Cormier, host of founder wisdompodcast.com and Thank CEO you. wisdompodcast.com. That was Barish Kara Dogan.